Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, the belly, I don't know, patella and digital. Yeah, we're going to be talking about the functions to life and anatomical terminology. Here we go. So, functions of the human body for life. We have to have movement, self-initiated, changing positions, motions of internal parts. You have to have responsiveness, be able to sense things coming and uh, sense changes within, around the organism, and to react with them. We need to grow. We have to have reproduction and parents produce offspring and new individuals. Respiration, obtaining oxygen, using it to release energy from our food substances and get rid of weight. Digestion, chemically breaking down our food and getting rid of waste. Absorption, passing of the digestive products food substances, through the membrane of the body into the fluid. Speculation, moving it all around. Assimilation, changing and absorbing the substances into chemically different substances. And excretion, mm. removal of waste. Yeah. That's what we have to have. So, anatomical terminology. Why do we need it? Well, we need to have precise definitions and meanings. Prevents ambiguity. One standard position and a special vocabulary. So, if I wanted to go over to France and or uh, England and or China and or Japan, anywhere, and talk anatomical terminology, we'd be on the same page. Unfortunately, there's a lot of it. So, anatomical positioning, standing straight forward, arms down, palms out. This is how all the descriptions are based on this position. This is the anatomical position. General body organization. We have the axle portion, which is going to be our head, neck, and trunk area. And then we have the, all the appendicular portions, which are going to be the arms and legs. Body organization and terminology. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, we're first going to start with directional terms. What the heck does superior mean or cranial? It moves. It means moving towards the head or towards the upper structures of the body above. Inferior, the opposite. Inferior or caudal means below, moving away from the head or towards the lower part of the structures or below. Next we have anterior which is also in the human the ventral side which is the front side towards the front or at the front of the body and we have the posterior side or the dorsal which is towards the back of the body or behind. Now medial sort of sounds like the median which is the middle so it's moving towards the midline of the body or the in, uh, moving inner from the side. And then we have the lateral, which is moving away from the midline or on the outer side. And I can remember that because it has later in it. And if I'm saying see you later, I'm going to be leaving. So you can remember lateral, leaving, going out. Intermediate is going to be the midsections in between. Proximal is the closer to the origin of the body parts or points of attachment of a limb to the body trunk. So again, the hand is not proximal to the body. It's not near the uh, point at which it attaches. Distal is moving further away from the attachment point of the limb to the body trunk. We have Superficial or external, which is towards or at the surface of the body, on the edge. You might have heard of a superficial wound. Or a deep and internal, which is away from the surface of the body, which is more internal. Deep goes further down. So, let's practice a few of these terms. The fingers are proximal to the body. Well, they're very, very far away from the actual attachment point, which is what proximal means. So I would say that would be false. There we go. 
Next, the neck is inferior to the lower, li uh, lower limb. Inferior means below. So the neck is not below the lower limb. It's actually above. It's going to be superior. So that's going to be false. Next, we have the sternum, which uh, is anterior to the coccyx or the tailbone. And that is going to be true because anterior means more to the front and your sternum is more to the front than your uh, tailbone. And we have our kidneys. Our kidneys are lateral to our spine. Well, if our spine's in the midline, lateral means moving away, which is going to be later. And yes, the kidneys are further away from the midline than the spine. That's going to be true. And we have the skin is deep to the muscle. Well, the skin is actually on the outer surface, so that's going to be superficial to the muscle. So that's going to be false. So, body plane. We've got more terminology. We tend to like to cut things in half to be able to see inside and what's going on. Well, we have a lot of different planes in which we dissect the body. So, sagittal is going to divide the body right into right and left parts. Mid-saginal, or the medial, sagin uh, medial, is a sagittal plane that lies on the midline, so that's actually going to cut you right in half. Next, we have the frontal, or the coronal plane, which is actually going to divide the uh, body into anterior, which is front, and posterior, which is back. So it's going to go straight down. Next, we have the transverse, or horizontal, which is a cross section that divides the body from the superior, and the inferior part. So it's going to go straight through and se separate the superior from the inferior. Oblique planes tend to cut diagonally. Let's take a few seconds to look at some pictures. So, again, sagittal plane is going to be cutting right and left, and it goes the mid sagittal goes all the way down. Then we have the coronal plane or the frontal plane that cuts the front from the back. And then we have the transverse plane that cuts the superior from the inferior. Now, it's not just the body. We do this with parts, too, such as the brain. We have our brain, and we cut it with the transverse, transverse section. We cut it with our frontal, separating front and back. And then we have our mid sagittal, which is going to cut from right and left. Body cavity. Now, when we look at the body as a whole, we have certain body cavities. We've got basically two big ones, and then they have uh, other body cavities within. The dorsal cavity protects the nervous system and is divided into two subdivisions. Now, remember, dorsal is going to be talking about further back, the back portion. So, this back cavity is going to house the cranial activity within the skull and in cases the brain, and the vertebral cavity, which runs with the vertebral column and encompasses the spinal cord. The ventral cavity houses the internal organs, known as the viscera, and is divided into two subsections, the thoracic and the abdominal pelvic cavity. So taking a look at this is going to be a lateral view, or a side view, moving away. And we have our dorsal body cavity, housing the cranial cavity and the vertebral cavity. Again, dorsal is talking about the back, so these two cavities are towards the back. And then we have the ventral cavity, which talks about the front, so it's going to have our thoracic cavity. It is separated with a diaphragm, and then we have our abdom um, abdominal cavity and our pelvic cavity. So looking at it from the anterior view, or the front view, we have the cranial cavity, we have the vertebral ca uh, cavity, and then we have our ventral cavities, which is going to be more front, that are going to cover up our dorsal or our back cavity. So these back cavities still continue down, but we have the ventral cavities that are going to cover them up. So we tend to have our thoracic cavity, we have our diaphragm that separates it from our abdominal pelvic cavity, 
Here it shows multiple different other cavities that you may want to take a look at. So inside of the thoracic cavity, it is subdivided into the pleural cavities, the mediastinum cavities, and the pericardial cavities. The pleural cavity houses the lungs. The abdominal pelvic cavity is separated from the superior thoracic cavity and the dome by a dome-shaped diaphragm. It is composed of two subdivisions, the abdominal cavity, which contains the stomach, intestines, spleen, liver, and other organs, and the pelvic cavity that lies within the pelvic, the pelvis, and contains the bladder, reproductive organs, and rectum. Okay, so now we have the regional terms from the anterior view, which is going to be the front view. So the nasal is the nose, and the oral is the mouth. Cervical is the neck, and the frontal is the forehead. Optical is the eye, and buccal is the cheek. Mental is the chin. That's mental. I'm done. Okay, so now we've got the acromal, which is the point of the shoulders. Auxiliary is the armpit. Abdominal is the abdomen. Brachial is the arm. Antecubital is the front of the elbow, because we're looking at it from the anterior or front view. Antebrachial is the forearm, again the front of it. We have the pelvic is the pelvis. Carpal is the wrist. Polex is the thumb. Palmer is the palm. Digitals are fingers. Pubic is the genital region. Patellar is the anterior part of the knee, so the front of the knee. And the crural is the leg. So the foot is known as the pedal, and it has the tarsal, which are the ankle, and the digitals, which are the toes. Up here we have the sternal or the breastbone, the thoracic or the chest, the mammary or the breast, umbilical is the navel, the coxal is the hip, the ingrunal is the groin, the femoral is going to be the thigh, talking about the femoral artery, if you've remembered that. We have the fibular, is the side of the leg, and we have the hollow, which is the great toe. Now let's check out the posterior or the back region. So, we have the cephalic is the head, upper extremities, the mana, which is the hand, and the lower extremities. Otic is the ear, occipital is the back of the head or the base of the skull. Acromenal is the point of the shoulders. Vertebral is the spinal column. Brachial is the back of the arm. Dor uh, dorsum or dorsal is going to be the back. Olecranial. It's going to be the back of the elbow. We have the lumbar, which is the lower back region. We have the sacral, which is between the hips. The gluteal, which is the buttock. The perianal, which is the region between the anus and the external genitalia. We have the femoral, which is again the thigh. We have the popliteal, which is going to be the back of the knee. The sural, which is the calf. The calcaneal, which is the heel and the plantar, which is the soul. You might have heard of plantar fasciitis, having a plantar's wart. Well, that's where they get that term, is from plantar. Final thing, regions of the abdominal area. So, going down the center, we have the epigastric region, the umbilical region, and the hypogastric region. From the right, we have the hypo, right hypochondriac region, the right lumbar region, and the right iliac region. Left, left hypochondriac region, left lumbar region, and left iliac region. And now we know our ABCs and 60 other anatomical terms, and now you can come play with me. So remember, this next week, we're going to be using these terms and playing lots of different games to familiarize yourself with them. So no worries, but at least now you've seen them at least once. So, have a good night.